What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to install SQL Server 2019 and how to install SQL Server Management Studio. So after I get done with both of those downloads and show you how to install it, I'm also going to be giving you quick tips so that you can kind of just get up and running and be able to actually use SQL Server Management Studio without getting so confused and show you a lot of the tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis so that you're not burning yourself out, wasting your time learning a bunch of features that you don't even really need. All of the things, you know, at the end of the at the end of this video are going to be, like I said, 90% of what you're going to be using as a uh, developer or any type of analyst too. So first, first thing, what I did is I just typed in SQL Server Download 2019. It's fairly easy to find. There's this up here. I don't know why there, people are putting ads on top of a SQL Server download, but um, go to SQL Server Downloads and then go to Express. Many people I've seen use the developer version, but the Express version is probably what you're going to be using in a production environment. And if you're a developer or some type of analyst, um, you probably just want to use the Express version unless your employer or somebody else tells you to use or has a different version for you to use. So next thing is you want to go to basic. You could sift through here and maybe try and find some like a custom version that you want, but um, I found that the basic version works just fine and uh, it's there's very rarely are they ever going to install any type of junk onto your computer. So I would say just go for the basic version. So while this is installing, I kind of just like to go through and give just a basic overview of like what is SQL Server? Well, SQL Server is a database and it's called SQL Server because most of the time SQL Server is going to be run on an actual server. So a, a server really isn't that much different from a regular computer and you can actually install server software on your desktop. There's no, the only real difference between a regular server and a desktop computer is very negligible and it really has to do with the fact that servers are meant to be communicated with over networks. And as uh, time has progressed, every computer is connected to a network. So there's not really, like I said, there's not much difference, but they call it SQL Server for that reasons. For that reason. What is SQL Server Management Studio and why are we also learning SQL Server Management Studio with a server course? Well, back in the day, <laughs> you had to communicate with servers through command line, uh, kind of like matrix hacker looking letters and these days we have very powerful GUIs that will, or GUIs or just graphical software that we can use to communicate with servers that can do a lot of the tedious work of typing out these commands and they can do them in uh, graphical user interfaces that make it just a lot more pleasing and more uh, human-like as opposed to the command line. Now, if you want to, you could go and become a command line master, but the great thing about SQL Server Management Studio is it's very versatile and you can even do a lot of the command line type. Uh, you know, you could type in SQL straight into, in almost like a command line fashion, but you're doing it in a GUI and you can save scripts and you can click and it can give you very powerful graphical tools to also go through all of your data as well. So even though we have the capabilities with just using a GUI, SQL Server Management Studio is going to make our lives a lot easier. And speaking of the devil, we've just installed SQL Server 2019 and don't copy down any of this right here. Just go into install SMSS or SSMS, I'm sorry. And go down to here to download SSMS and go ahead and download. Uh, SMSS is actually like three gigs in size. So it's, it's a huge, it's a monster of a program. And it could take us here, take us, just a little bit, give us five seconds, three seconds, just to run out the clock and download this thing. So here we go, gonna go ahead, click it open. And if you don't see this, it's all, I'm, I've got dual screens, just click yes, it's gonna, ask, it's gonna ask for permission to download the app. Then I'm gonna bring this over here 
and we're going to go ahead and install it. Now, the great thing about SQL Server Management Studio 2 and when you in install all of these things is that it's going to do a lot of the setting up for you. So if you've ever installed other databases like Postgres, Postgres can give you uh, a lot of trouble with how the graphical or the GUI and how the actual server connects to each other. It, the SM, many times people get confused about how they interface. The SMSS actually is uh, not really connected with the server. The server is running on the back of your computer, in the background of your computer, in uh, these graphical tools like SM or uh, SQL Server Management Studio are meant to connect to um, server centers in distant remote places or places that you don't actually live. For testing purposes, our physical server is going to live within our desktop computer, but just realize that once you get a job, the server that you're going to work on is probably not even going to be in your building or it's not definitely not going to be in your computer. And that's also a, kind of a, another thing. And another important point too, is that um, this is like a lab, but when you actually start working, just realize or ask your boss, you know, where is the server? Cause I, that's actually something that I did when I first started my job. I thought the server was gonna be like, I had to put the server on my computer, but that really wasn't the case. And kind of made me look stupid, but whatever we live and we learn. So go in here and type in SQL SQL Server Management Studio, and we're just gonna go ahead and boot that up. And it should be, we can just go ahead, let's try and connect, just click connect now. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna make sure that the uh, server instance is actually running. And we're gonna go ahead and exit out of that. So, re when you are connecting to a foreign server, you're actually going to have a password, but we're not going to have a password because we have this thing called Windows authentication. So many times people are like, well, what password do I put in? You're not going to need one when it, the local database is actually installed on your computer. So we're just going to go in here and we are, congratulations guys, you have installed SQL Server Management Studio, but I'm not going to stop there. Like I said, I'm going to give you a really good, uh, place to start and I'm going to tell you where like 99% of your time is going to be concentrated so you're not you know out here you know searching through files and doing all these crazy things 99% of what you're going to be doing is going to be under this tab right here so if you ever just get lost just be like okay I'm just going to go back to the databases tab and um, go back just go back here so Next thing is, let's just go ahead and create just like a quick little test database so I can show you guys what a database actually even looks like. So go in here, click new database, and just uh, click test DB. Don't even mess with any of that stuff down there and don't mess with the owner because you don't need to worry about that. Just type, just type in test DB. Hold on. Um, you could actually create test DB. What happened there was I actually have installed, like I had to uninstall SQL server. So it's, it's showing that there's another instance there, but you could type in test or you could just type in DB test like this. And we're just kind of doing this for example sake too. So you could just type in DB test and then that's going to actually create a DB test for you. So within this, within the 90%, 90% is going to be spent like within here or whichever database that you're going to be working on. So when you guys start working, you're going to go in here and you're going to see probably 20 databases. Right now, there's only one database because it's just a local computer. But when you start working, you're going to have like 20 databases in here. And when you fold this down, you're going to have these things called tables. So within the database test, you're going to have uh, tables. I'm going to... This explanation of what a database is blew my mind. So I used to run with a data scientist, uh, or I had a, I had a really big, if you know me, I was a really big runner and I used to run with a data scientist. And one day he said something to me really profound. He said that databases are Excel spreadsheets that can be tied together through keys. And if 
anything if you don't even remember any bit of this course remember that because that is going to help you a lot when you're trying to visualize you know what exactly is a database a database is really just an excel spreadsheet on steroids it's an ex a database can hold uh you know, like hundreds of tables and it's meant for all of these tables to be logically be able to be connected together and manipulated through sql queries so if you ever just get freaked out be like oh, i just can't understand like what a database is or what these table things are just remember that tables are excel spreadsheets and these tables are stored within buckets of these databases if this thing kind of looks like a bucket i think it looks like a bucket and that's how i remember it tables are or databases are just buckets of tables and that's going to be the important part so let's go ahead let's right click on the tables and let's just create a table really quick and i'll even go kind of just show you this excel spreadsheet analogy and why i think it's you know such a good analogy so we'll go test you can name it whatever you want to you can just call it, I don't know, dog. <laughs> and we're gonna call it table, and then we're gonna call this one table test. And you will notice that nothing actually happens. You'll say, well, we created our table. Why isn't it showing up? Because you have to hit this little, you have to refresh it. You have to hit this little button right here. So go here. And you will see it's created our actual table. So within our database, we have tables. And within our tables, you can see if you right click it and you go to select top 1000 rows. This I do this, I use this command every single day. Literally every single day at work, I'm using this command. So make sure to take, take note of this command. Select top 1000 rows. And we've got our table. So just like an Excel spreadsheet, if you looked at an Excel spreadsheet, you would have, um, I don't know, you'd have like a name, then you'd have a price. Like if we had an Excel spreadsheet of products, you'd have a name, then you would have a price, then you would have uh, like maybe like the location of the product or which warehouse it, it was in. And then you would have just columns of data. And it looks just exactly like an Excel spreadsheet. And up here, this is another important part. This is the query that's actually being run. So this is all of our the, in three really important parts just to get like conceptually of like where to look in sql server management studio we have three important parts this is where all of our databases and our table tables are going to be graphically laid out this is where we're going to be actually writing our uh sql queries and then this down here is where all of our results from our sql queries are going to be displayed you see when i right click that and i went select top 1000 rows it showed, uh, it created that SQL for us and then displayed it down at the bottom. And in a nutshell, that's to get started in SQL Server Management Studio, that's probably all you're going to need. Now, other things that you're gonna wanna know is that this is how you execute the SQL. Um, you can go up here to save your scripts. Like if you have a script that you're using all the time, you can save them in particular folders and you always need to be cognizant and aware that don't um, execute SQL on master model or uh, MSDB, tempdb. Always make sure that you're executing SQL on the actual data database that you plan to. Otherwise, you could accidentally execute against the master. You could exe execute against the model. And... Um, don't even worry about any of this stuff down here because you're never, until you become like a DB, if you become a DBA admin, you might use this stuff down here. But for people who are trying to get developer analyst jobs or just become some type of SQL professional, unless you're like a serious DBA and you, if you're trying to become a DBA, there's courses on that will teach you how to do that. But for just being able to get, you know, up and running with SQL, uh, that's all you're gonna need and not uh, all you're going to need, but that's going to be enough so that you could actually be able to Google stuff and figure out stuff intuitively on your own, which is kind of like the whole reason of this course that I'm gonna uh, take you guys on. Anyway, that's gonna be my video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that it was very helpful, provided a lot of value for you. If you did, make sure to stick around for the rest of my videos. Make sure to drop a sub, 
join my discord if you guys uh enjoyed it just hit or above all else, just hit that subscribe button. Anyway, hope that you guys have a good one. See you later.